going back in time to the first Thanksgiving to get turkeys off the menu. That's right! We're, We're going, going back, back in time, time to the to first the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving to get, get turkeys, turkeys off the menu. menu. Hello everyone, it's Sam aka Ocean Unknown and welcome back to my channel. This is the seventh and technically eighth installment of my series of analyzing characters through the theatrical lens. So we've got a double feature today. First and foremost, this video contains spoilers for the whole game of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, so proceed with caution. So let's get into the video. Generation nine of Pokemon started on November 18th, 2022 with the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, taking the players to the Paldea region, which takes its inspirations from the Iberian Peninsula. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet offers an open world experience to the mainline Pokemon games with 107 brand new Pokemon. Along with the new world and new Pokemon, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet gives players a type of adventure that has never been seen before in Pokemon, an overarching story made of three parts. These three stories correlate with the three rivals slash companion characters of the games. Nimona, a battle-loving student and president of the Academy Student Council, Arvin, a humanities student who's a wonderful cook, and Penny, a shy student who is often absent from school. With Nimona, you follow the Victory Road storyline, which is your typical Pokemon Gym Challenge story of battling the gym leaders, Elite Four, and the champion of the region. If you choose to accompany Arvin, you'll follow the Path of Legend storyline where you fight large and powerful Titan Pokemon that protect Herba Mysticas, a healing ingredients for Pokemon. Lastly, Penny's storyline is Starfall, Street, where you fight off Team Star, a group of delinquent students which fulfills the evil team trope in Pokemon games. After completing these storylines is where the end game of the story starts, amply titled The Way Home. This story centers around the two characters of this video, Professor Sada and Professor Turo. <laughs> Professor Sada. <gasps> Women! I'm so sorry for that. I'm just really, really gay. <laughs> professor Sada and Chad, I mean Professor Turo, are the professors of the Paldea region in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Sada appears in Pokemon Scarlet and Turo appears in Pokemon Violet, respectively. As they are version exclusive characters, they play the exact same role in the story and are thus together in this video. Along with this, there are obvious differences in the text depending on the game, so when I'm directly quoting the game, I will be general and just say the professor. As for discussing version exclusive stuff like Coridon and Maridon, I will most of the time just say the legendary Pokemon. The player is first contacted by them when they first enter the academy they attend, the Naranja Academy in Scarlet and the Uva Academy in Violet. Before we get to that, it's exposition time! After meeting Nimona and choosing their starter Pokemon, the main character and Nimona hear a loud Pokemon cry. The main character investigates and finds the box art legendary, Coridon for Scarlet and Maridon for Violet, too weak to move, stranded on the edge of a beach. After giving the legendary Pokemon a sandwich, it wanders into a cave with the main character following it. Coridon and Maridon saves the main character from a pack of Hound Hours and a Hound Doom, and then the main character, Nimona, and the legendary Pokemon encounter Arvin at the lighthouse. Arvin has negative feelings towards the legendary Pokemon, which the reason why is revealed much later. This is also where it is revealed that Arvin is the son of Professor Sada or Turo, depending on the game. Arvin says it doesn't matter who his parents are and says that the Coridon and Maridon once belonged to his parent. He challenges the main character to a Pokemon battle and upon being defeated, Arvin gives the main character Coridon or Maridon's ball. Nimona asks why Arvin was in possession of the legendary in the first place and he runs off. Back to the professors, the main character is called to the director of the academy Academy, Clavel's office, where he says that a friend of his has a rather serious matter they would like to discuss with the player. Professor Sada or Turo, depending on the game, appear on the screen next to him as they introduce themselves. They state that they conduct research within the great crater of Paldea at a site known as Area Zero. Clavel jumps in to explain that the professor is an alumni of the academy, as well as being an excellent researcher. The professor then says, you are the student who travels with the unusual Pokemon Coridon or Maridon, is that correct? Thank you. I appreciate that you were honest in confirming the facts. Ah, not that I, I, I do not mean to offend you. In fact, I wish to ask for your assistance. The legendary Pokemon comes out of its ball as they say, oh, how good to see that you are well. It has been quite a while since we last met. Crydon or Maridon was once in my care. You see, its Pokeball was originally mine. I assume you received it from a young man called Arvin. I am no longer in any position to be able to manage that Pokemon myself. This is what I will ask of you. Will you continue looking after the legendary Pokemon on my behalf? After agreeing to do so, they explain that the Pokemon has been greatly weakened and is currently incapable of battle. However, it 
can be used for mobility and transportation. They state that it will take some time to fully regain its capabilities, and they also exchange contact information with the main character to keep in contact about developments on the Pokemon. They sign off on the video call, and the player doesn't hear from Sato or Turo for a little bit. As the player progresses through Arvin's Path of Legend storyline, the professor contacts them as Karadon and Maraidon regain more of their possibilities from eating the various Urban Mysticas in the form of Arvin's handmade sandwiches. They also explain how to use the abilities of the legendary such as dashing, jumping to high places, and swimming as the Pokemon gains them after defeating Titan Pokemon. Before challenging the fourth Titan Pokemon known as the Quaking Earth Titan, the professor calls the main character to explain that the Quaking Earth Titan is a Pokemon from the great crater of Paldea where they work. However, the Quaking Earth Titan is a special kind of Pokemon. Depending on the game, the Quaking Earth Titan is either the ancestral Great Tusk or the futuristic Iron Treads form of the current Pokemon Dawn Fan. After defeating all of the Titan Pokemon, the main character and Arvin are asked by the professor to return to the lighthouse where they first met, which is actually the professor's lab. Arvin explains that the lab was a frequent childhood play space for him, and then Arvin reveals his backstory and why he had such resentment for the legendary Pokemon and his parent. He says, everyone always says there's some kind of genius, absolutely brilliant as a Pokemon professor, my parent that is. But let me tell you, as a parent, they're the worst. All they ever do is work. They never come home. I don't have a single memory of them even playing with me, their own kid. He states that his partner Pokemon, Mabostiff, was the only one by his side. I will absolutely be making one of these videos for Arvin, so I will discuss his connection with his Mabostiff in that video. Arvin and the main character enter the lab to find it is completely empty apart from the bookshelves, furniture, and multiple computer screens. The professor appears on the largest computer screen and says, I need your help. I am currently at the deepest point of Area Zero in the Great Crater of Paldea. I have been researching the unique Pokemon here for a very long time. I'm asking the two of you to lend a hand to help carry out the final step of the Great Professor's glorious research. But there is something we need first, something that can be found within that lab. What they need is the Scarlet or Violet book, depending on the game. Arvin has the book which he used to find the Urban Mysticas, in which the professor says, Ah, so you took it from the lab, did you, Arvin? That expedites things. Bring the book to the deepest depths of Area Zero. I promise that it will be an experience worth treasuring if you come. I must note, however, that Area Zero is both home to vicious Pokemon and outfitted with powerful cybernetic security systems. It seems to me that you might struggle if the two of you were to enter alone. You may take the time to gather some reliable allies before you come if you feel the need. I will be awaiting you in the deepest part of Area Zero whenever you arrive. The professor signs off and Arvin's worries of Area Zero kick in, stating that he'd be happy to know Never see that place again. After the main character confirms that they're going to Area Zero, Arvin decides to join them because his parent asked and he says that he can't stand by while a friend heads off into potential danger, along with a desire to find some closure regarding his parent. The professor suggests the main character and Arvin bring allies to Area Zero, which end up being Nimona and Penny. The player is instructed to finish the other two storylines to reach Area Zero with Nimona, Arvin, and Penny. Upon arriving at the great crater of Paldea, Arvin says that Area Zero is where Kuraidon and Maraidon first appeared. As the main character and Arvin walk towards the entrance to Area Zero, the endgame story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet starts. The way home. Arvin and the main character enter the Zero Gate and find Nimona there, who mostly showed up after being told there were strong Pokemon that she could battle in Area Zero. Penny also arrives, stating that she hacked into the gate system to turn the lights on and came to Area Zero because she owes the main character one. After a quick introduction between friends, the professor interrupts, saying they've been expecting the main character. The professor tells the characters to head down into the Great Critter of Paldea while avoiding Arvin. This is where the professor starts acting a little weird. They open the door, which opens up to a cliff above Area Zero. The professor instructs the main character to use the legendary Pokemon to glide over the cliff. He send out the dragon, but it gets scared looking down at the crater. Arvin climbs on the Pokemon's back to reassure it that everything will be okay even if they're both a little scared. Nimona and Penny climb on the Pokemon's back as well as the legendary dragon is about to jump off the cliff. Arvin grabs the main character's hand as they glide into the great crater of Paldea into what is seemingly a beautiful paradise. Area 
zero while majestic and beautiful is unsettling and eerie at the same time a lot of elements contribute to this the ominous music that creates a feeling of you shouldn't be here along with the pastoral garden-esque imagery that just gives me bad vibes for those of you who don't know a pastoral garden also commonly known as arcadia arcadia is gone so sorry i love mariana strange this drop in media where a character tries to go back to a gentle quiet state of life similarly to the Garden of Eden from the Bible. Especially taking into account the themes of past versus future in these games, the Arcadianess of Area Zero is so eerie. I'm not alone in these feelings of uneasiness as the legendary Pokemon starts shaking as soon as they enter Area Zero. It goes back into its Pokeball and the professor starts being weird again. They then say, It appears you were able to make the descent without being harmed. Arvin is sarcastic about the landing, but the professor just says, That is good. I can sense you might fail, given the crudeness of the only available access method. The characters take note of the professor not understanding Arvin's sarcasm, and they say, You should now make your way to me at the Zero Lab, in the deepest part of Area Zero. They say, however, that the entrance needs four locks to be unlocked, which the professor cannot unlock themselves. The group of allies learn that they must visit four research stations within Area Zero to unlock the doors. After some fourth wall breaking, the friends continue on their adventure to find the four research stations. Once there, the professor instructs the main character on how to disable the locks. After disabling the first one, Arvin explains his resentment towards his parent to Nimona and Penny and explains how he came down to Area Zero once to try to get his parents' attention, but he and his Mabostiff got attacked by a Pokemon and were both injured badly. Upon reaching the second research station, they encounter their first Paradox Pokemon in Area Zero. Paradox Pokemon are a group of Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet that consist of two subgroups, primitive ancestors of present-day Pokemon and mechanical descendants of contemporary Pokemon. All of the names of Paradox Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet have more species descriptive names. In Pokemon Scarlet, they encounter Screamtail, a primitive fairy psychic type ancestor of Jigglypuff, and in Pokemon Violet, it's Iron Bundle, a robotic ice water type descendant of Delibird. After defeating the Paradox Pokemon and entering the second research station, the professor calls in again saying, I suppose the time has come for an explanation. They state that some of the life forms that reside in Area Zero are Paradox Pokemon as they reveal something else in Area Zero, a time machine which summoned the Paradox Pokemon to the current day. Arvin says, So the thing my parents spent forever researching down here, they actually got it working? And the professor replies, Indeed, but the cost was catastrophic. The professor explains that in theory, the time machine works. However, a human being would not be able to return to the present. Arvin asks why they were all asked to come to Area Zero, in which the professor says, Arvin, I... If possible, I would like us to speak when we can meet face to face. It will be easier for you to understand once you can see the situation for yourself. The main character disables the next lock, and Arvin and the main character work together to defeat another one of the Paradox Dom fans to disable the third lock. Penny asks how the professor could have possibly let Pokemon from different times roam around in Paldea, and Nimona asks Arvin about the legendary's connection to the roaming Paradox Pokemon and the professor's time machine. Arvin states that the legendary Pokemon was found by his while they were working on the time machine. The professor interrupts by saying, I believe it would be best for me to take over the explanations at this point. They state that the legendary Pokemon Coridon and Maridon was the first Pokemon that they successively retrieved from a different time period by the time machine. They then explain, Through analysis of its genetic makeup as well as its behavioral patterns, I came to realize what I had discovered was in fact a paradox form of Cyclozar, the Pokemon commonly ridden in this region. Many other Pokemon also came to this place across the boundaries of time, but I was never able to bring more than two specimens of the legendary Pokemon. This reveals that there are in fact two different Coridons or Maridons currently in the Paldea region. Nimona suggests that the other legendary could be in Area Zero and could possibly want a family reunion, and then the main character disables the third lock. As the allies travel to the fourth and final base, Arvin explains how after discovering the paradoxical 
legendary Pokemon, his parent got so invested in researching it that they neglected Arvin, which is why he feels a strong resentment towards Area Zero, the legendary Pokemon, and his parent. He explains how the professor one day when he was younger came home with the legendary Pokemon and was told to keep it a secret, but the legendary attacked some wild Pokemon and some people witnessed it. After the secret was out, the professor fled with the legendary Pokemon to Area Zero, leaving Arvin behind. They enter a cave full of strong Pokemon and crystals and travel down below to find the fourth and final research station. The research station is an absolute mess and is full of crystals. The professor comes back on the intercom and says, Hello, children. Scaring the friends. I'm just gonna monologue this scene out. I enjoy this scene so much. I'm sorry. Why is everything in here all busted up? I'm sorry. Hello, children. Come again? What the heck? Stop that, you're creeping us out. Hello, child. Children, 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 children. The professor must be having some some weird connection problems or something, huh? Uh? Well, it was definitely weird. At least almost like, I don't know. If you meant it as a joke, it wasn't funny. I still got goosebumps and all. So, uh, I think you all know where this is going, so let's continue. The main character disables the final lock, and the professor is back online. Uh, uh, uh. Hello. Can you hear me now? Please f f forgive my previous transmission. There seems to be some signal interference. That's not what that was. The professor instructs the friends to make their way to the Zero Lab, which lies at the very bottom of Area Zero. In the books in the fourth research center, it is implied that the professor had an assistant that left soon after Arvin was born. In Scarlet, it specifically says it was a man, and in Violet, it specifically says it was a woman. It later says that the professor hired a new assistant and the productivity has doubled since they were hired. The friends make their way further into the cave as Nimona, Penny, and Arvin discuss how odd the professor has been acting. Nimona dismisses it as the the professor jazzing them up for a big adventure, whereas Penny shows more concern for the professor's behavior. Arvin is seemingly down, but is very aware of the situation that may be at hand. As they reach the entrance of the Zero Lab, the professor calls them again and says, Hello children, the structure you see before you is the Zero Lab. They go on to explain that Area Zero is shrouded with crystals that possess a strange energy that can alter the function of living things and optimize the performance of machinery. They also explain that this is the same energy that causes the terrestrializing phenomenon in the Paldea region. Penny realizes is that because of this, Terra orbs were made with the resources in the Zero Lab, and the professor confirms her hypothesis. The professor then says, Since we have disabled all four locks, the gate to the Zero Lab should now open for you. But once you open the gate, you will be quickly confronted with the dangerous Pokemon inside. They will likely make a break for freedom. But the four of you working together, you should be able to fast them. Prepare for yourselves well, then open the gate. Just as the main character is about to open the gate, their friends convince them that the legendary Pokemon could help them defeat the dangerous Pokemon. The legendary comes out of their Pokeball, but something even more dangerous and aggressive comes their way. The main character's legendary Pokemon is scared of its fellow Paradox buddy as it is a lot more aggressive than it. As the friends question if that was the dangerous Pokemon the professor was talking about, the gate to the Zero Lab opens and a gaggle of Paradox Pokemon surround them. The friends defeat the dangerous Paradox Pokemon altogether as the main character heads up the ramp to the Zero Lab. As the main character enters the Zero Lab, it's a barren scene, an empty lab full of machinery and muted colors, until they see the professor slumped onto an office chair and facing the ground. As his step closer, the professor speaks. Human presence detected within the Zero Lab. The main character and their legend Pokemon get closer to the professor, still slumped on the chair. Deactivating sleep mode. The professor gets up and thanks the main character for arriving in the Zero Lab. All of a sudden, the aggressive Koraidon and Maraidon enters the lab as the professor holds up a master ball, telling the dragon to go back in its balls. balls. I'm so sorry you all have to put up with my editing. The professor turns to the main character and says, That one is far less tractable and far more aggressive than the one you've traveled with. Your Pokemon fled Area Zero because it lost to the other one in a territorial struggle. While you all may already know where this is going, it's finally time for an explanation. The professor the main character has been talking to throughout the game is not the real professor. 
This professor is an AI the original professor created imbued with their memories and knowledge. So you may be wondering, where is the real professor? The real professor passed away during the incident that destroyed Research Station 4. The AI reveals that the professor threw themselves in front of Karajan and Marajan to protect it, which ended up killing them. They then say that they asked the main character to come to the Zero Lab for one last mission, to put a stop to the time machine the original professor created. The main character follows the AI to the elevator to descend to the time machine the deceased professor invented. The AI offers to answer any questions the main character has and ask him over what information we learned from these questions. In the present day, an artificial intelligence like the AI professor is technically impossible. However, due to the terrestrial crystals in the Zero Lab, the original professor was able to build the sophisticated AI version of themselves. Along with that, the terrestrial crystals in the Zero Lab make it impossible for the AI professor to leave the Zero Lab. The time machine the original professor created along so that AI was used to send Pokeballs to different timelines to catch Pokemon there and bring them to the current day. The AI then says, when they were alive, the professor had a great fascination with Pokemon from another age. Even as we speak, the time machine continues to automatically draw Paradox Pokemon to this time. The final question the main character asked the AI is, is this what you really want? In which the robot says, the original professor had a dream of a world in which Paradox Pokemon might live alongside present day Pokemon in harmony. But these Pokemon have gained a strange power, and this power has proved too terrible. Their existence brings destruction to the ecological balance of this current age. The original professor would say that such destruction is a natural part of life. The AI mentions how Area Zero had a barrier around it to keep Paradox Pokemon inside Area Zero. However, the barrier had started to break and Paradox Pokemon are appearing in the Paldean Wild, such as the Quaking Earth Titan. But this barrier destroyed and powerful and dangerous Paradox Pokemon roaming around Paldea. The ecosystem of this region could be ruined. The AI says, I may have been created as a copy of the professor and yet i cannot seem to find the logic in allowing such a tragedy to occur but any hope of preventing it will require overcoming the greatest ai that the original professor ever devised you have become a formidable trainer now use that strength you have gained to destroy the dream the professor once cherished the main character and the ai reach the lowest level of the zero lab which is completely encased in terrestrial crystals the ai says behold this is the time machine we perfected using the power of the terrestrial phenomenon. In order to stop the time machine, the main character needs to use the professor's ID, which has been embedded within either the Scarlet or Violet book. It was very like the professor to put the final key we would need in that book, of all places. If he placed the book upon the pedestal here, we'll be able to stop the time machine. There is just one issue. If you try to stop the time machine, I will most likely attack you. Uh -huh. Artificial being that I am, my own desires can be overwritten by the system's programming. Once that happens, I'm afraid I will become no more than a battle machine, bound to defeat anyone identified as an obstacle by my code. The battling abilities are peerless. They are built upon analysis of all the battles carried out by the various champions of the Paldea region. Having seen the bond between you and your Pokemon, however, I believe you can prevail. The main character places the professor's book on the pedestal as the time machine initiates an emergency shutdown that gets denied. The AI switches to sleep mode as it, as expected, activates offensive protocols. The last thing the AI professor says before attacking is a somber, please defeat me. As the time machine turns on, a master ball drops in the AI's hand. The AI professor says, at, at last, at last my dream is within reach and you're not getting in the way. I'm not gonna lie. I first read that as number seven and I was like, who were the other seven? John, AKA PM7? It's a no frog. The AI initiates a battle, dropping their Pokeball from a massive pedestal. The AI versions of Professor Sada and Taro have completely different teams, but there is one commonality between their full teams of six. Their teams are made entirely of Paradox Pokemon. AI Professor Sada's team is full of fearsome ancient Pokemon, starting with the bug fighting type ancient form of Volcarona, Slitherwing. Her team is then followed by Primitive Mischievous, the ghost fairy type Fluttermane, Screamtail, a dinosaur like Amoongus, the grass dark brute Bonnet, an electric ground ancestor of Magneton, Sandy Shocks, and the dark dragon type Primeval Salamence, Roaring Moon. Professor Turo, on the other hand, has a team of frightening futuristic Pokemon, starting with the fire poison type descendant of Volcarona, Iron Maw. His team is then followed by Iron Bundle, Iron Hands, a fighting electric type Hariyama, Iron Thorns, the robotic rock electric type Tyranitar, Iron Jugulus, a dark flying type machine hybrid of Hydreigon, and my personal favorite paradox form, Iron Valiant, a 
theorized experimental fusion of Garnevoir and Gallade. Since this is the final boss in the game, it is a difficult fight, but when the main character defeats the AI professor, the robot short circuits and yells, In impossible. Nimona, Arvin, and Penny all run into the time machine room, and Arvin has his chance to confront his parent, or who he thought was his parent. He says, All right, out with it, you. Who are you, really? The malfunctioning robot says, th th Thank you for, for everything. The time machine has finally, they have finally been stopped. Oh, look how big you've grown. So proud of you, my. Sorry, you were alone so, so long, Arf. As Arvin starts to wonder if his parents somewhere in there in this machine, a threat to the time machine is detected. The room becomes either scarlet or violet. Ha ha, like the name of the games. As the AI yells, it cannot be. The Paradise Protection Protocol is activated in the time machine as the AI professor yells, what? Was keeping the time machine running truly all the professor cared about? The Paradise Protection Protocol locks all of the friends' pokeballs as the terrestrial energy of the time machine starts to take over the AI professor's body. The professor says, I'm sorry, children. This is too much for you. You must run. As the AI professor is overcome with terrestrial energy, the AI's programming is completely overwritten by the Paradise Protection Protocol and the AI says, you are not getting in my way. A second battle in the time machine commences as it first says, you are challenged by AI Sada or Turo, which glitches out into, you are challenged by the Paradise Protection Protocol. For a brief second, the text says, AI Sada or Turo has no intention of fighting anymore, which furthermore shows how the Paradise Protection Protocol has completely taken over the AI. The AI sends out the more aggressive Koridon or Maridon. As the main character tries to send their Pokemon into battle, their Pokeballs are still locked. However, as the main character is the main character, there is a loophole. One of the main character's Pokemon originally belonged to the professor, their own Koridon or Maridon. The legendary Pokemon is finally ready to take on its not so friendly rival once and for all as Koridon and Maridon gets into its battle stance. After using the power of terastalizing, the main character and the legendary Pokemon are able to defeat the other Pokemon and the Paradise Protection Protocol is defeated. Upon being defeated and released from the Paradise Protection Protocol, the AI professor says, how? How very astounding. I think that you would manage to defy even the original professor's final protections. Arvin asks if they're back to normal, and they say, yes, a completely unforeseeable outcome. Even for an AI possessing the most sophisticated technology ever conceived, even on the brink of despair, you children did not give in and instead proved your worthiness, showing the wisdom to think for yourselves, the courage to hold faith in your friends, and the fortitude to do what had to be done. No matter how difficult your own paths have been, I believe you'll be capable of walking whatever paths you choose for yourselves now, with pride. But I am afraid that the time machine cannot be put to a complete stop so long as I am here. It appears I myself am part of the system that ensures the machine re boots when stopped. I am sorry. You know, when I was watching you all on your adventures from down here, I felt a sense of jealousy. I envied you, your freedom. That way that you came together, working in league with your fellows and caring for them. The way you sought strength and be better yourself, throwing all you are into your battles. The way that you have faced down even the greatest enemies to save that which you loved. The way that you never ceased to seek nor to fight for a treasure all your own. Ah, and the way that you soared free through the very skies on those wings of yours. I wish that I too might be as free as you are free to seek out that which I might treasure above all else not found as long as i remain here the time machine will not stop for i am inextricably connected to it so i've made a decision i will use the time machine to journey to the world that i have dreamed of i am not going only so that the time machine can be stopped i also cannot deny my desire to see that world for myself is this what it feels like to have your heart race with the thrill of adventure arvin i'm sorry that i kept the truth from you for so long i inherited all the thoughts and wishes of the professor and so i understand better than any your parent truly loved you as the time machine activates to send the professor to the timeline they've always wished to see, their final words are, farewell my free adventurers, I bid you adieu. The friends watch the AI float into the time machine and wait, hold on. I know this scene is supposed to be emotional, but all I can think of is that SpongeBob meme. Anyways, the AI of the professor goes to their desired timeline and the time machine created by the original professor has been deactivated. With the AI in another timeline and the time machine deactivated, this marks the end of Professor Sada and Turo's stories in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. 
as always with these videos, we need to identify the protagonist, antagonist, given circumstances, and the climax. As I've mentioned in my other theatrical analysis videos about Pokemon, video games merge the idea of a protagonist with the player in real life. However, through the theatrical lens, the protagonist is the person who is searching for a goal and at the end of the story, we as the audience find out if they achieved that goal or not. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is interesting in this regard. Let me explain. There is one overarching story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but there's also three stories within the games. If we look at these three stories individually, you've got three different protagonists. The main character for Victory Road, sorry Nimona, Arvin for the Path of Legends, and Penny for Starfall Street. However, as this is a game with an overarching story that includes a full resolution at the end, there has to be a protagonist for the overall story, and I think I found them. In the theatrical lens, the protagonist of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is Arvin. While he achieves one of his goals at the end of the Path of Legend storyline, The Way Home, the final storyline, still has a major focus on him with him being the son of the professor. As I mentioned earlier, I will be making a video about Arvin in this series. I will discuss his position as the protagonist of Scarlet and Violet more in that video. Moreover, the antagonist in video games tends to be the final boss or any villains in the story. In the lens of video games, the professor is the major antagonist, and in the theatrical lens, I have to agree. The professor is the main person stopping Arvin from achieving his overall goal in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and at the end of the story, Arvin gets some pieces of closure. This means that Arvin bested his personal antagonist, his parent, the professor, and thus achieved his goal in the theatrical lens. Moving on to given circumstances, some given circumstances about Professor Sada and Turo to consider when analyzing the games are that the real Professor Sada and Turo are dead and were killed trying to protect the friendly Koraidon and Maraidon. The Sada and Turo, the playable character speaks to throughout the game is an AI replica of the Professor, and the original Professor built a time machine for research and to bring Pokemon from different timelines to the current day. Next is the climax. In the video game lens of storytelling, the climax of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the final battle between the main character and the AI Professor, ending with their legendary Pokemon defeating its rival. In the theatrical lens, the climax happens in this scene, but it's not the whole scene. The climax in theater is when the protagonist's major dramatic question is answered. I'll discuss Arvin's major dramatic question in his video in this series as to not spoil his video, but the climax of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in the theatrical ends is when the AI professor says to Arvin, I inherited all the thoughts and wishes of the professor, so I understand better than any, your parent truly loved you. Now since Professor Sada and Turo are not the protagonists of the games, it is not major dramatic question time. It's actually about 1.06pm, which I guess is time for a little segment for non-main characters, goals and roles. As I mentioned earlier, Professor Sada and Professor Turo are the main antagonists of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in both the video game and theatrical lenses. Their main purpose in the story is to prevent Arvin from achieving his goal by the end of the game. However, there's something I have neglected to mention until now. The deceased professors and the artificial intelligence replicas are different characters with different motivations. This isn't even a double feature! It's a science fiction quadruple feature! The real professors and the AI both function, haha <laughs> pun intended, to prevent Arvin from achieving his goals, but they had different views, opinions, and goals. The real professor's truest goal was to keep their prized time machine intact, not caring about who or what is harmed by the time machine, which is not the same as the AI's intention. While the real Sada and Turo were okay with Paradox Pokemon being brought into the modern day, the AIs understood the ecological damages that the time machine and Paradox Pokemon could cause to Pileia. Despite these concerns and potential dangers, the real professors did not care about the consequences of the time machine. Part of the reason this AI storyline is so compelling is because often in media with AI or robotic characters, the AI is the one who ends up being evil due to either going against their programming or adhering to their programming and missions to a T, even when their creator is evil as well. Sound familiar? I'm so sorry, when is there not gonna be a video essay where I randomly use Vine Boom sound effects and mention Marcus? He's a silly little robot guy. Instead of actually being evil or fulfilling the real professor's corrupted goals, the AI versions of Sada and Turo have morally correct concerns about the well-being of Paldea and the people and Pokemon who live there. Also, the human creator of the AI, Sada and Turo, are outwardly shown to be morally bad people. We're introduced to them through learning that Arvin is their son who has a lot of pent-up anger towards them. Before passing away, Sada and Turo were negligent parents who ignored Arvin and became fixated on their work, possibly while well knowing how harmful their work was. Because the real professors are dead, we as the audience don't fully know if they knew the dangers of bringing Paradox Pokemon to the current day. However, since they are a smart professor and had the AI with them the whole time building the time machine, 
who knew about the dangers of the time machine, it's safe to assume that they knew threats and willingly ignored them to further their research and goals. The AI actually cared about protecting Paldea's people in Pokemon, which shows when the AI pleads for the main character to defeat them. Even with Arvin, the AI up front tells Arvin that his parent loved him, something his real parent never told him. The real professor is not completely evil, but definitely not a good person by any means. They're ambitious, but to the extent of harming others, even those they love like Arvin. As far as deciding whether the real professor or the AI is more of the antagonist to Arvin in his story, it's more of his actual parent than the robot they created. Arvin didn't even know that his parent was dead until the end of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet when he saw the AI for the first time in person. He thought his parent was still alive working in Area Zero neglecting him. As the audience, we don't know the timeline when Sada Urturo died which creates even more worry for how neglectful they were as parents to Arvin. Even while being a not so good person, Sada and Turo are not inherently evil. They did die trying to protect the friendly Koridon and Maridon from what is heavily implied to be the aggressive Koridon and Maridon, which makes the Paradise Protection Protocol even more twisted and interesting as the AI is possibly wielding the Pokemon that killed the Professor. In the end, the AI sacrifices itself by fulfilling both its own wish of turning off the dangerous time machine and also fulfilling the original Professor's wish of seeing the timeline they were infatuated with. Despite all of the misdeeds the original Professor Sada and Turo did, their separate goals from their AI counterparts are significant and play a massive part in the story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Turn into a robot from outer space. Normally in this segment, I talk about popular theories about the characters I'm discussing, or in Marcus's case, I just talked about him being a theater kid. With Sada and Turo, since Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are such new games, there aren't many theories about the games, let alone about Professor Sada and Turo. So for this segment, I will discuss a few theories about Professor Sada and Turo, as well as some past theories about them that were made before the games were released. First off, many have theorized that the assistant that the professor wrote about in their journal in the fourth research station is actually the other professor. This is mostly due to the fact that Sada's entry specifically states her assistant was a man, whereas Turo states that his assistant was a woman. Along with this, it is heavily implied that Clavel used to work for the professor in Area Zero as he questioned Koridon and Maridon's origins at the beginning of the game. There's also a decently popular theory that there is an entity in Area Zero known as a Disc Pokemon that could be the third legendary of Paldea. This Disc Pokemon is said to be able to alter reality and show someone's desires, which could go as far to mean that the time machine wasn't even the time machine to begin with. It could have possibly just been Sada or Turo's desires material. Materialized. Then again, these are just theories and there's a high likely chance that Scarlet and Violet will get DLC or a sequel game, so we'll have to see what happens then. Moving on to theories that were debunked when Scarlet and Violet were released, YouTuber Not So Ace Trainer had a theory that the professors were fake and were characters created by Clavel to influence the main character to go on a Pokemon adventure, which we know now is not true. Another big theory that kind of turned out true was that the professors were the villains. The evidence to back up this theory was that their outfits matched the past versus future themes in the story. Story, and Sada and Turo are the first Pokemon professors whose names aren't derived from Flora. The part that a lot of people predicted that ended up being debunked was that both professors would be in both stories and the opposite professor would be the villain. So Sada would be the villain in Violet and Turo would be the villain in Scarlet. This as of right now is not true, however this could possibly happen in DLC or a sequel game. While I've discussed Sada and Turo as characters in the theatrical lens, there are still a few theater elements to talk about. First, let's discuss foils and how Sada and Turo adhere to the game's overall themes. There could be an argument made that Arvin and his parent are foils of each other to highlight a major part of Arvin's character, his compassion. While Arvin throughout the story is a bit rude and standoffish, he deep down is very loving towards his friends in Pokemon, especially his Mabofstiff. When they were alive, the professor was neglectful and not very compassionate towards Arvin, thus contrasting with their son's personality. This negligence from his parent emphasizes Arvin's helpful, loving personality despite his sometimes cold exterior. There is also a connection between the professors and Clavel, as Clavel takes on more of the traditional role of the Pokemon professor than the real professors do. Clavel's name is derived from Flora, the Catalan word for carnation and clove to be specific, and he gives the main character Nimona their starter Pokemon, a job typically reserved for the region's professor. This could be interpreted as intended to further create suspicion around the professors as they aren't connected to the previous professors in 
the series, as they aren't doing the job they typically do in the story. Moving on to how Sada and Turo pertain to the themes of the games. The themes of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are the exploration of past and future, finding your own treasure, and uncovering the truth. Sada and Turo fit with all three of these themes very well. Let's start with the obvious one. Sada and Turo are basically the personifications of the past and future themes in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This is the most evident in their designs and names. Professor Sada sports a peach cave woman outfit, which can I talk about for a second? I thought for the longest time, including while writing this video, that she was wearing dinosaur feet slippers. She's not, he just has regular sandals. Professor Turo, on the other hand, wears a purple futuristic bodysuit straight out of Tron Legacy. These costumes convey the themes of past and future very well to an audience. Along with the costumes, their names represent these themes as well. Their English names are derived from the Spanish words for past and future, Pasada and Pichiro. It is also a possibility that Turo's name is a reference to British mathematician and scientist Alan Turing, who invented the Turing test, a test designed to test a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior indistinguishable from a human being. As far as the theme of finding your own treasure, the real professors represent the danger of finding your treasure or desires as their desires ended up being their ultimate demise. At the end of the game, the AI professors decide to sacrifice themselves in order for the harm the original professor caused to stop, but also to find their own purpose and treasure in another timeline. Lastly, Sada and Turo pertain to the theme of discovering the truth in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as they are not what they seem. The reveal that the Sada and Turo the main character has been talking to are actually AI-powered robots and the real professors passed away is uncovering the truth about who the professors are, as well as uncovering the truth about Area Zero, the legendary Pokemon, the terrestrial phenomenon, and the mysterious dangerous time machine. Moving on, just like our resonant Pokemon unhinged pretty boy Volo, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet feature a lot of foreshadowing towards Sada and Turo and the big reveal at the end. First off, their theme throughout the games, while sounding both primal and futuristic, which fits the theme of past and future, it sounds very technological and kind of robotic. This hints at the AI reveal at the end which most of these foreshadowing elements I will discuss in this video do. More foreshadowing in the introduction scene with Sada Urturo that foreshadows them being AIs include that their heads stay perfectly still while their body moves perfectly fine, and that they know the ID of the main character and say them out loud and later do the same with Nimona and Penny's ID numbers in the Zero Gate. Continuing through the story, when the main character and Arvin enter the empty lab and talk to the professor on screen, the professor says, I'm asking the two of you to lend a hand to help carry out the final step of the great professor's glorious research. Which at first may seem like the professor is talking about themselves in the third person and a little bit arrogantly, but this is actually the AI talking about their deceased creator. There is also a line in the Scarlet or Violet book on the page about Paradox Pokemon that says, one of our teams suffered a great blow from such a beast and was mortally wounded, forcing us to retreat for a time. It is heavily implied that this member of the team was the professor. There is also more foreshadowing from their son, Arvin. At the Zero Gate, after hearing his parent over the intercom, he says, that's my parent. Probably which foreshadows that it's, in fact, not them. Arvin also says, I feel like I've lost my parent due to Crydon or Maridon, which foreshadows the fact that he actually did lose his parent and Crydon or Maridon were a cause of that. Lastly, there are quite a few foreshadows found in the fourth research station in Area Zero. The professor says that the terrestrial crystals found in Area Zero optimize the performance of machinery, which foreshadows them being a machine, and the lab being a complete mess foreshadows how the professor was killed in that research lab. In the professor's journal in the fourth research lab, but the professors wrote, if only there were two of me, which there ends up being in the form of the AI-powered robot. The journal also says that after their first assistant left after Arvin being born, they were replaced and since the replacements started working, the productivity had doubled. The book also says that the replacement's intellect rivals the professors and is rigid at times. It's implied that the replacement was the AI replica. Finally, let's discuss the color psychology in their designs. As mentioned before, Professor Sada wears a peachy orange cave woman outfit and Professor Turo wears a violet futuristic bodysuit. While the obvious reason for these color choices is the name of the game, Scarlet and Violet, these color choices can be applied to color psychology. Orange is the color of adventure and risk-taking, which fits Professor Sada very well, especially considering the ending of the games. The color orange is often associated with being superficial and self-indulgent, which suits Sada as she is selfish in her scientific endeavors. Warm tones like the orange Sada wears is also commonly connected to archaeology, earthy tones, and the past due to rocks, cave paintings, and fossils. On the other hand, and Violet is the color of ambition and mystery, which suits Turo's ambition in his research and the mystery behind who he really is. Purple tones are also frequently found in futuristic or cyberpunk color palettes, often representing something artificial. All in all, the designs of Sada and Turo tell the audience a lot about their characters visually in a theatrical sense. 
conclusion, Professor Sada and Turo are characters who have a lot of theatrical elements in their characters. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. One like equals one vine boom. Comment down below what characters you would like to see in the series next, and what's your favorite new Pokemon from Scarlet or Violet? I'll answer my own question, my top five are Fido, Belly Bolt, Iron Valiant, Slitherwing, and Tinkaton. But I'd love to hear which Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet you all like. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much.